Good afternoon, everyone, and a Merry Christmas to you as you join us virtually here at St. Greg's for this Christmas Day Mass. Uh, Father Leon Bernat, our pastor, is going to be the celebrant, and I'm going to be assisting him at this Mass. Um, uh, to, in order to make this a little bit more festive, we're going to be singing as much of Mass as we can to make it a kind of a normal uh, Christmas celebration. So I invite you now, as we begin this Mass, to join me in singing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come, ye, O come, ye, to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels, O oh, come, let us adore him, O oh, come, let us adore him, O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of Sing in exaltation, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Ye Lord, we greet thee. Born this happy morning, Jesus, to Thee be our glory give. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Merry Christmas, everyone. As we gather together, we do thank God for the gift of our technology, that even though the snow prevents us from being together as we would like to celebrate Christmas Mass, we can do so in this fashion. And uh, we know that we are united at the table of the Lord. Even if we're not physically in the same building, we become one with each other, especially at this table in the body and blood of Christ, as we are members of His holy body. And of course, we celebrate today the great joy of the birth of our Savior this Christmas day. And so we try to put all things aside, the challenges of this storm, and now the cleanup thereafter, and to focus on the true beauty of this day, the birth of Christ, and the joy, the life, the love He brings. And so we pray for these graces. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves to come to the altar worthily and celebrate the sacred mysteries this Christmas day. We pause to acknowledge our sin, to rely on God's mercy and forgiveness.
Lord Jesus, born Savior of all nations, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, born Son of God, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, born Son of Mary and Joseph, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. In this day we do pray the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and so more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace and bearing good news, announcing salvation and saying to Zion, Your God is King. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry. Together they shout for joy, for they see directly before his eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you who lands. Break into song, sing praise. All the ends of the earth 
have seen the saving power of God. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before God, the King, the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, He has spoken to us through the Son, whom He made heir of all things, and through whom He created the universe, who is the refulgence of His glory, the very imprint of His being, and who sustains all things in His mighty word. When He had accomplished purification from sins, He took His seat at the right hand of the Majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, this day I have begotten you? Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship Him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Good news and great joy to all the world. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Alleluia. 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 As we uh, prepare to listen to the words of the Gospel for those who may be following in your missiles at home. The first two readings were those prescribed for Christmas Mass during the day, but the Gospel that I will proclaim is the one prescribed for Midnight Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Saul went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the field, keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were struck 
with great fear. The angel said to him, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I chose to offer the Gospel for the Mass at midnight. Of course, the Gospel prescribed for the Mass during the day is a beautiful Gospel, of course, from uh, the beginning of John's Gospel, and the beginning was the Word, and we know that Gospel well, but I uh, think uh, we all like to hear about the manger, you know, on Christmas, and so I, I always chose that, that uh, Gospel to be read. And I am sure that uh, for all of us, we are not celebrating Christmas as we normally would wish to celebrate. Hmm? You know, we are not able to be with our family and our friends as we normally would be. And uh, maybe many of our plans have changed. And we, we know the meaning of celebration. We know what it means to celebrate. And we like to celebrate, huh? And uh, hopefully, as uh, the season of Christmas, we're in the octave, you know, uh, so... For the whole week, it's Christmas as if it's Christmas Day in the church. And uh, the season of Christmas extends beyond. So we've got a lot of Christmas ahead of us. And uh, unlike uh, maybe in the retail where we've moved on to Valentine's Day already, uh, it is still and will be Christmas for, for a few weeks. Celebrations are important. And I'm going to guess for many of us, perhaps we've been part of a major celebration, if it be in our life or planning that in the life of someone else. We can often call those major celebrations or anniversaries a jubilee. I know five years ago I celebrated my 25th anniversary. We called it my silver jubilee. And uh, not only did we have a beautiful mass here at St. Gregory's and a, a beautiful large reception in the ministry center, uh, there were many parties throughout the year. The whole Jubilee lasted a year, time of rejoicing and thanks and praise. And very often for weddings or ordinations or religious profession of vows, we mark those very special anniversary years, 25 years, 50 years, 75 years. And we, we call it a year of Jubilee, a Jubilee celebration. And we know for the last year or so, not quite, the diocese has been celebrating our 175th anniversary, a jubilee year, time that we mark 175 years of faith here in western New York for the Catholic Diocese of Buffalo. And we know marriages, ordinations, and other celebrations, this time of jubilee. And uh, it's important to note, particularly as we think maybe of wedding anniversaries, hmm? It's important to note that in the Old Testament and in the New, we see marriage as a covenant. And in the Old Testament, certainly saw as a relationship between husband and wife as we do in the New. And we see God is really in a covenant relationship with you and me, with His people. A marriage. He is married with His people. The covenant between God and man and people, that is what we celebrate today, Christmas Day. God becoming man in the person of Jesus, like us in all things but sin. And in a few moments, we in church will be privileged to physically receive the Eucharist and Jew at home spiritually receive communion. We know the Eucharist is that bodily union of that marriage covenant between God and man. In a few moments, I will be at the altar along with Father Joe and will say, take this and eat. This is my body. 
take this and drink. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for many. We hear in Scripture that our Builder will marry us. So God, our Creator, marries us. We are wed to Him. And He is wed to us in human nature, particularly in the person of Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate. You know, we sing a beautiful song, and we, we heard of uh, the song a little in the Gospel today. We sing the beautiful Christmas carol, Angels We Heard on High. And we know in the middle of that song, reflecting on the shepherds, as we heard in the Gospel, the shepherds were keeping night watch over the flock. What do we hear in that beautiful Christmas carol? Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What your glad times, gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song? Gloria in excelsis Deo, come to Bethlehem and see Him whose birth the angels sing. It's a beautiful question posed. Why this jubilee? Why reflect on jubilee in the midst of a snowstorm when we cannot be with our own family and friends as we wish we could? Why bring this theme of jubilee to Christmas today? Well, on a very practical level, we need to be reminded in the midst of a snowstorm and separation, uh, we still give praise and thanks to God, as the Scripture today very clearly reminds us to do. And again, on a very practical level, we do celebrate the 175th Jubilee of the Diocese. And for many of us, maybe that Jubilee has gone under-noticed. We know it's happening, but we really haven't entered into a, a Jubilee over it. Maybe it's gone under-celebrated by many. And I dare say, sometimes maybe we even treat Christmas the same. That sometimes uh, the true meaning of Christmas is under-noticed and under-celebrated, it gets eclipsed by decorations and gifts and parties and so on, and sometimes we really forget the exact person we're celebrating, the birth of Christ. Maybe the storm has given us an opportunity to spend a little more time reflective these last couple days to reflect on the true meaning of Christmas. Why this jubilee? Well, in Scripture... Jubilee comes to us primarily from the book of Leviticus, Old Testament, but it's also mentioned in Isaiah, the second book of Kings, and Numbers, and Jeremiah, and Daniel. And of course, in the New Testament, the Gospels of Luke and John, as well as in Romans and Hebrew. Basically, in Leviticus, a Jubilee is every 50th year. Every 50th year was declared a year of Jubilee. It was a year of freedom. A year of liberty. Slaves were released and returned, restored to their families. Ancestral land was returned to its rightful owner. Laborers were freed from their work. It was a reminder that Israel would not be slaves again after 400 years of slavery in Egypt. After 400 years without even a day off, they will no longer be slaves again. Jubilee celebrated all of these things. Similarly, in the Scripture, every seventh year was a sabbatical year or another form of a Jubilee year. And it was in that sabbatical year, the seventh year, that time of Jubilee, that land was restored. Now, the land itself was not farmed so that the soil could be regaining its nutrients and strength to produce. It was a year that deaths were forgiven and that uh, the Hebrew slaves were freed. But why this jubilee? What does it mean for us? First and foremost, it means to rest. That's what it means. If you think back to the book of Genesis, God created the world, and on the seventh day He rested. And so on the seventh day, we are called to rest every Sunday. It's a day of rest. I'm sure many of us will remember that uh, Sunday was a day of rest. It was a day that you went to church and spent the time with family. And the uh, 
larger community was kind of like the last couple of days. Everything was closed. Stores were closed. And many things that we take for granted being open today, they didn't exist and they weren't open. Sunday was a day of rest. Jubilee is that call to worship. And we hear in that song, Come Adore on Bended Knee. So why this Jubilee? Jesus Christ is the Jubilee. The manger that we focus on, the manger is the Jubilee. And the cross of Calvary is the Jubilee. Every Sunday Mass is Jubilee. And so as we celebrate the birth of Christ today, we remind ourselves that He is the Jubilee. He's the one that freed us from slavery to sin. The Jubilee, freedom from slavery. Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate today, restores us to life and cancels out all of our debts. Jubilee, the cancellation of death. It is Jesus who restores us to our family, the body of Christ, and opens up the gates to our ancestral home, the kingdom of heaven, the meaning of jubilee. So this Christmas really is a jubilee, even though we're separated, maybe isolated at home. Still a jubilee. And as we look a week from today, New Year's Day, and many of us will make resolution, maybe this Christmas and the Jubilee we can begin to prepare for a week from today. Maybe that resolution can be to uh, take a day off. Let Sunday in the new year be a day of Jubilee, a day of rest, a day of family, a day of prayer, a day of worship. Maybe in this new year we can uh, make that recommitment to worship regularly. You know, since the pandemic, so many have not returned. Now, of course, some cannot because of their health and other inabilities to be here. But for some who have returned to work and school and regular life, still following Mass online, time to return physically to worship and prayer to receive the Eucharist and Jubilee. And as we heard in the second reading today, Jesus Christ, among many things, we heard about that freedom from sin. And so we maybe make a recommitment to abide within the power of the forgiveness of our sin, to receive that sacrament of penance, to go to confession, particularly if it's been some time, and to use wisely each and every Mass, the very beginning penitential rite to call to mind our sin, to ask God's forgiveness, and the sign of peace at Mass, to extend that peace to one another and forgiveness. Maybe the resolve this coming year will be to see our real citizenship as the kingdom of heaven and not focus so much on things of the earth, but to keep our eyes fixed on that goal of heaven. So why this jubilee? Jubilee is our freedom. And what is freedom? Well, freedom is not that we can do anything we want. That's not freedom. Freedom means we do what we ought to do in the name of Christ. We live as a faithful member of His body following His teaching. That is freedom. Freedom means we live a life within the life of Christ, a life within the life of the church. And so this Christmas, and hopefully every Sunday, see it as a day of jubilee to realize your freedom in Christ and worship. This Christmas, live in that nuptial union with God. God made man. God so intimate with us, He becomes our food in the body and blood, the Eucharist. Live in that freedom of Christ. As I look back five years ago, there were many individuals who came to celebrate my Jubilee year. Some from very short distances and some traveled great distances, particularly that weekend mass and reception. And I was very humbled for all who came, short distances and large. But to many I said, you know, I'm so thankful and thrilled you you made such of a long trip just to be here. And almost all of them said something similar to this. There's nowhere else we'd rather be than right here, right now, together with you. It's a beautiful statement as we celebrate Jubilee with others. And maybe the prayer for us all in this coming year to feel the exact same way about the Eucharist each and every Sunday. There's no place else we would rather be than right here, right now, with Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, whose birth we remember 
this beautiful Christmas day. We think about these things as we celebrate the Jubilee of Christmas. As we profess our creed together, it is our custom on Christmas to genuflect at the mention of the Incarnation. And so in that middle part where we talk about the Incarnation, Jesus being born of Mary, as you are able at home as we pray uh, together now, I invite you to genuflect as Father Joe and I will do at that time. We pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day of Jubilee where we once again mark the birth of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Help us abide in the freedom that he has given to us. And may we direct our lives always on our true citizenship, our true homeland, the kingdom of heaven. Please hear now our needs and petitions, and help us here on earth. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that we, that as we celebrate the birth of Christ, we may continue to grow in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the governments and leaders of the world, that the message of the angels announcing the coming of the Lord may be realized in every effort to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those recovering from natural disasters, including all of us here in western New York, uh, recovering from this storm, that they may find a sign of certain hope in the birth of Jesus today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our parish family, that receiving Christ this Christmas day, we may learn also to welcome him in the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those oppressed by hunger, sickness, or loneliness, that they may find relief in both mind and body through the mystery of the Nativity of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all of those who have died in faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In a special way at this Mass, we pray for Ryan Marchiori, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our own personal intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer to you these many needs and intentions, those spoken and those treasured in our hearts. We humbly present to them to you this Christmas day. 
As we celebrate this Eucharist, may we recognize Your Son, our Savior Jesus, is the true Jubilee. May we rest and offer proper worship to Him now and always. All in preparation for the day, You call us to our citizenship in the Kingdom of Heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Of course, each and every Mass we celebrate is very important in each and every intention that we have, meaning the person for whom the Mass is offered, usually someone who has passed away, you know, for their repose, is important. But I feel important to mention today's Mass, Ryan Mark Iori. I can see him standing right here. He was one of our Eucharistic ministers, one of our younger parishioners, who passed away far too young, in his early 30s. And I know... Uh, his parents and brother and sister-in-law, his wife, are probably out there listening right now in prayer with us. And uh, you are such wonderful parishioners and a great family of St. Greg's, one of the ones who make us the great, put the great in St. Gregory. And uh, so we certainly join you in prayer this uh, day as we especially remember Ryan at this Mass and offer it for his repose. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, and dominions, with all of the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gregory the Great, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray for that spirit of jubilee, that joy spoken of, certainly in our readings today. And we pray that we live as Jubilee people, knowing that we are freed by Christ and that we are given our ancestral home, citizenship in the kingdom of heaven and the freedom he brought. We pray for the grace to keep our eyes directed always on that heavenly kingdom and not be distracted by the things of the earth. We pray for this, at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, as we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your... By the... Sorry. I lost my place. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another now a sign of peace. All right, peace. And again, Merry Christmas. We're on peace. Son, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. invite those joining us virtually to pray an act of spiritual communion with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so He may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, before we conclude our time of prayer together, please allow me in Father Dan's name and Father Joe's name and my own, uh, along with Sister Shaw and all of our parish deacons, our whole parish team here, we, we extend to all of you our prayers and best wishes for a joyful, a very merry, a very holy Christmas. And certainly know each and every day we pray for you at this altar, and uh, we are always here for you. So at any time, please know that you may call upon us. And uh, we're so uh, grateful uh, that, uh, you know, we are able, through the means of technology, to be connected this day, even though physically separated. And at the doors of the church, you would have found, and they'll be here next week when you come, you know, two things. The, the parish calendar is there that we give every year, and they're, they're out there. And then a book called The Wisdom of the Saints. And it's a beautiful little book, literally just... One, maybe two sentences of quote a day from one of the saints of the church. And uh, it begins January 1st, so you get it next Sunday, you're, you're right on, on the beginning date, which is great. And it's a beautiful sentence or two to uh, read as a prayer, maybe reflect on each and every day. These will be available at the doors of the church next week as, as they were prepared for this week. And uh, certainly... Uh, you know, some are probably not where they wish they were at the moment, you know. And we have three of our, our uh, staff members with us. We've been having a good time at the rectory. Uh, Ron Kress, who's at Mass with us, uh, he is uh, one of our maintenance team, and he, he got stranded here, but we've been doing all right. <laughs> and uh, checking on his wife, so if, if your wife's listening, he's doing okay. <laughs> and Michael Hensler, who... Uh, does all of the decorating in church along with Lee, but Michael coordinates all of that for us and uh, oversees the scheduling of our property and different uh, liturgical things. Uh, uh, Michael's been here with us the whole time as he got snowed in decorating along with Lee Zach who works with him on those matters as well as our parish nurse. Lee has a couple hats she wears, so you know uh, we're so grateful that uh, you're with us this Christmas. It will certainly be a Christmas to remember. And for Father Joe, a very special Christmas because it's the first Christmas he is as a priest. And uh, he will remember, yeah, we we'll give a little round of applause, all right. And uh, he presided at his first Christmas Mass at 6 p.m., but he has been at every single Mass, so he will definitely remember that. And uh, today, serving can celebrant, but also as cantor. And uh, far better he to be the cantor than me. So we are so grateful. Uh, and uh, congratulations in this Jubilee year for you, your first year as a priest. May God bless all of you with a joyful Christmas and uh, a very blessed and abundant new year. Know of our love and our prayers always. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. We offer a prayer for renewal. In every age, O oh God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news. Celebrate your saving presence among us. Serve others with charity and justice. And steward the world you've entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we end this Christmas Mass, let us sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the Herald Angels Sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, 
join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing 